Here's why Minecart's the deadliest entity in the game. And here's how to make a completely invisible trap for your friends to fall into. And these are the 27 most evil ways to kill your friends in Minecraft. So only do this if they deserve it. This is the deadliest entity in Minecraft, but not by itself. But rather, if you were to get more than 24 of these put into the same spot, then our friends can have to deal with something called entity cramming. Which is when the game thinks there's a certain number of mobs in the same spot, to avoid overloading on lag, they'll quickly start applying steady damage to the player. And by placing a honey block near the bottom, we make it even harder for them to escape once they fall in. But hey, at least they won't die alone. Here's how to kill your friend with an elytra. The answer comes down to fireworks rockets, but not these ones, rather these ones. And while they look ever so similar, there's one key yet deadly difference between them, which is if you were to craft up fireworks rockets using fireworks stars, then visually they look the same. And as long as they don't read the item description, if they try to fly with these fireworks star rockets, it's gonna get pretty deadly pretty fast. And just that initial lift off is almost enough damage to kill an unarmored player. So if they're spamming rockets to try to escape from your base, this will bring them back down to earth and put them six feet under. Next time your friend goes underground, they should make sure to look at the ceiling, since if they're not careful, they could be standing under this trap, where, once activated, breaks the sign and then drops thousands of gravel on top of the player, which if you stack it high enough, it's gonna be tough for them to escape before they die, even if they were to have an instant mine shovel. Oh, and not to mention that the same setup could cause a lot of client side lag, which is annoying, but it adds to the effectiveness. If they're slow to react, they're gonna be slow to escape too. Do not go in this bubble elevator, since while it seems peaceful from here, the truth is that at the top of the elevator, we can set it up in such a way where your friend's just gonna land in lava when they reach the top. And from there, if we block the exit, there's really no escape for them. But the first question is, how do you put lava on top of a bubble elevator? After all, lava and water are like oil and water. They shouldn't mix. But thanks to a scaffolding placed in the bubble elevator, we can break off the stream from the lava and still use the speed from the bubble elevator to push them right up into the death trap. And the biggest joke of it all is that the water that they need for safety is just out of reach for them. Here's how to teleport your friend to the end without ever breaking bedrock. Since thanks to a glitch of the end portal, if you were to push your friend with a regular piston while they're standing underneath the portal, it'll teleport them to these exact coordinates in the end. And more often than not, that doesn't mean the main end island, but rather, they're more likely to end up in the void. And as Branzi and Mr. Cube show off, you can even refine this system to make it a whole lot faster. Just make sure the player you're trying to kill isn't rec wrap. Otherwise, it's never gonna work out. Lately, it's been a popular idea to use powdered snow buckets with a carpet over top in your drop shafts. Since it is true that if you were to drop on powdered snow in this way, you won't take any fall damage. But come on, it's just too easy. You can use that same carpet to cover up a regular block, and they'll be none the wiser. So as long as that drop down is far enough for them to take enough fall damage, this could be a quick way to kill them off. You could even use a hopper underneath the carpet and collect all their stuff for you. Then it's just too easy. Even if you're not able to make the drop shoot deadly in its own way, we could make it into an accessory for murder. And perhaps the most straightforward and effective way of doing this by adding a charged creeper to the enclosed area. That way, when they land at the bottom, they're just gonna hear a hiss, and the rest is history. So even if they're safe from the fall, that same safety isn't gonna last for very long. Dropping a stalactite through the end portal is an easy trap, but it's too obvious. But if you're willing to break a bit of bedrock, you could instead put that same concept to use with one of the end gateways. And there, it could be a lot more subtle. And might I add, it still works plenty well, being able to instantly kill your friends as soon as they go through. So as long as you nudge them to go first, they can teleport through, tank the hit, and then leave all of their stuff for us to pick up as soon as we follow suit. With a fishing rod and some good aim, it's possible to kill your friends with just one right click. And by using something like scaffolding to get way up, then we'll be able to pull them all the way up to the sky, and then let them fall to their death. Which, as long as they don't have something like protection or feather falling on their armor, should be pretty easy to do if you're in something like a man-made city or a jungle even. And hey, gives a use for your fishing rod and PvP, which is good, because I thought that got phased out after 1.9. This is the deadliest cave in Minecraft. Since even though it looks safe from above, as soon as our player gets into position, then what happens here is that the floor comes out from under them, and because we broke bedrock, the only choice they'll have is to fall right into the void. And then if we were to seal it up with a block with a high mining time, like netherite in this example, it's not possible to come back back up even if you have an elytra. And as long as it's sealed flush with the bedrock as well, they can't even place any blocks to try and support themselves. Meaning they've only got one choice out of here, and it's not a pretty one. If you time it just right, it's possible to light a TNT just one second after you get into the portal, and make it in such a way that the next person who teleports through that nether portal will be loading in that same piece of TNT, and almost guaranteeing that they're gonna blow up. Making this trap perfect for a manhunt, or even just if your friend's trying to get back to their base. Netherite armor makes it tough to kill your friend, and enchanted netherite makes that job nearly impossible. But the key word there is nearly. Since with the help of pointed dripstones, we are able to kill through full netherite. We'll just need to be creative about it. And for this example, we have a fake slime block elevator that actually just serves as the killing chamber. And once they get in the minecart, what's actually gonna happen is three pointed dripstone is gonna take them down. Which might seem cruel, but the way that I see it, this is an even better elevator. Instead of taking to the second floor, it takes us straight up to heaven. And might I mention, at a record pace. TNT is an easy way to kill your friends. There's no surprise there. But with just five iron ingots, we can make that same TNT 
a lot more deadly. Since if you were to set up a TNT minecart in such a way, we can make these explosives detonate instantaneously, which alone would be deadly enough, but we can go one step further, since there's virtually no limit to the amount of TNT minecarts that you can put on a single rail. So with enough time and plenty of iron, we can pack enough C4 to level a small country into one single block space. Good luck to your friend who tries to survive this. While creepers are the obvious choice to kill your friend, it's also a pretty messy solution. And personally, I'm not looking for more evidence than I need to clean up anyway. So thanks to the 1.19 update, we've now got a new contender. With the help of some noise and a skulk shrieker, we're able to summon a warden and then bring it into their base. And then with a name tag, we'll make sure that that warden doesn't despawn. Just make sure you don't have to respawn when you try to move it. It's a deadly process to say the least. But if it's good enough to kill us, then it should be more than good to kill your friend. And that way, the only thing you're cleaning up is their items off the ground, instead of having to fill in a creeper hole. While your friend might think they're safe when they disconnect from the server, the truth is anything but that. Since now, we know exactly where they're gonna spawn back in when they log into the world. And from there, we can be as cruel as we like. But for me personally, I think the obvious solution here is to encase them in an obsidian box and then fill it up with lava. They'll be so taken aback that there's barely any brain power left to react with. But even if they could, obsidian takes a long time to mine and lava's a quick killer. So, uh, good luck. This one might not be efficient, but it's definitely effective. And if you're willing to play a war of attrition, you could always just steal all of your friend's food and crops. That way, they're bound to always be starving. Or at the very least, they won't be able to regen. If anything, even if they're not gonna starve to death through this, it'll make your job with the other ones so much simpler. And it's a good prerequisite at that. Forget using a bow and arrow to kill your friend. Since if we were to use a bit of gunpowder and paper, we can make our crossbow even more deadly. Loading up a firework with the max number of firework stars, we can load this into our crossbow and unload a whole bunch of damage into your friend. And if you doubt the effectiveness of this, I'll remind you that fireworks are strong enough to kill the wither. So they should be plenty fine for your friend as well. And hey, at least they'll go out with a light show. Your friend's base should be the safest place in their world, which is why we're gonna ruin that. And the most straightforward way of doing this is just to remove the light sources from their base. That way we're able to get plenty of mobs to spawn inside. But if you want even better results for this, you could use those light sources that you stole from their base and use them to light up neighboring caves around their house. That way, any hostile mobs that try to spawn are only gonna be able to spawn inside of your friend's house. And that should give them more than a few unwanted visitors. If your server has a bunch of minecart tracks for transportation, that's the perfect opportunity for some mayhem. Since on those long rides through the nether, people usually go AFK when it gets boring. But what we have planned is a lot more exciting. Since if you just divert that minecart track into a different location, it's possible for us to drop it onto pointed dripstone and get an easy kill. Just remember that if you're doing this against players with armor, you will have to drop them quite a distance. That being around 97 blocks if they were fully enchanted netherite. But the thing is, most players who have netherite aren't wearing a chest plate. So if they're instead using an elytra, that drops down to 51 blocks. And honestly, it's their fault for using a minecart when they have an elytra. Those things are way faster anyway. Or if instead of a railroad, your friend uses ice boats, that's also plenty easy. Since with how much speed you're able to get when you're riding one of these, it's tough to react that fast. So if we were to break a hole through the nether pathway into the underworld below, the results will probably speak for themselves. All we need is a few spider eyes and we can make one of the deadliest traps for your friends. Since by brewing up a mix of three potions, an instant damage two pot, slowness four, and poison two, we can cram all of those together in a dispenser and then use this player detection model using a carpet over a redstone ore so that when they walk on top, they will be quickly greeted by death from all directions. And since potions can hurt players even through armor, this might be the simplest way for you to bring your overpowered friends down to their low point. And hey, you can even brew up multiple potions at the same time, so you'll have plenty of chances to get it right. How deadly can a pumpkin be? Well, honestly, this carved pumpkin isn't gonna kill your friend, but it's gonna make them wanna do the job for you. See, through the use of an anvil, it's possible to attach a cursive binding book on top of a carved pumpkin, which if you then set a dispenser next to something like their bed, you can force your friend to wear that pumpkin. And force is the right word there, since they're not gonna be able to take it off ever. I mean, there is one way, but that involves their death. So I guess they get to be creative in the way they want to exit this world. If your friend's AFK at a mob farm, then they're practically setting themselves up for disaster. I mean, there's already a steady stream of mobs coming through, so why not take those hostiles that they're taking advantage of and instead redirect them so that they spawn next to the player? After all, one of these farms can kill thousands of zombies over time, so it's only fair that the zombies themselves get to settle the score. I'll be honest, I'm not the best at PvP, so if it comes down to it, I'd like to put the odds in my favor. And there's no better way of doing that than with this axe. I Mixing together a sharpness five netherite axe, strength two, and a critical hit, we're able to deal 27 points of damage in a single blow. And folks, to put that into perspective, the average player only has 20 hit points of health to their health bar. So this is overkill and then some. And even if they're wearing protection four armor, we only need to hit them one or two more times before they're completely leveled out. And speaking for me personally, it's a lot easier for me to understand how to brew up a strength two potion than to ever learn how to properly PvP anyway. And if you don't want to be the one holding the netherite axe when you kill your friend, no worries, get a zombie to do it for you. Since a zombie that's holding 
wielding a sharpness 5 netherite axe, is fully capable of one-shotting an unarmored player. And trust me, it's pretty scary to have to deal with one of these. Even if you do have armor, they don't have nearly as much of an attack cooldown. So get too close, and the rest is history. Having an armor dispenser like this is a big flex. Except not when you have this one. <laughs> Since if your friend were to only take the time to look inside, they notice that what actually happens here is that they're coated in lava, which is then next to some hidden waterlogged blocks. Meaning after you use the system, you're gonna be quickly encased in obsidian, and that'll suffocate them before they can mine themselves out. And considering that this kind of system is typically used by someone who's new to the world, or recently died, the odds of them having a diamond pickaxe fast enough to get themselves out of there is close to zero. Meaning that if they just died, they're probably gonna be dying again soon. This trap is completely invisible, since by using the moving piston block, formerly called block 36, we're able to keep falling block entities from going back into solid form, which means that we can keep falling blocks sitting right in place with no collision box. And from there, as soon as the player walks over it, they're just gonna fall through without even noticing what happened. And while the methods for getting block 36 are pretty complex, such as using end crystals in conjunction with pistons, as soon as you find out how to get one of these, the only thing left for you to answer is how do you kill them once they fall through? Because with this design, it's almost a guarantee that they will. And with that, folks, YouTube thinks that you might like this video. So see if they're right and have a good one.